Hello, it's lovely to see you all. I'm Asterix and I'm today's host. It's great to see you on the YouTube chat lines. Let's, let's keep them coming. Mr. Yeats, I'm excited for Randy Feltface. Me too, fella. Becky Smith, yay, it's on soon. Yay. Great to hear from you, Jalira. I'm very excited for today's episode as well. Today, we think about imagination, and it's great to have you joining Imagination TV. We are here to go to the 10,000, 10 billion, wait, 1 billion odd children that have been affected by COVID-19. And today, we are going to bring them a mentor in the name of Randy Feltface, and we've partnered with the Melbourne Comedy Festival for Cancelled Not Cancelled and each week on a Thursday we'll be doing this with lots and lots of different festivals. Oh, I can see the YouTube hat chat line is lighting up again. Mm. Yes, Omar, I may be Randy's cousin. My name is Asterix. Randy, how are you? Welcome to the show. Hey, hi Asterix, it's great to be here. How are you going? Bit funny. Bit funny, you all right? You having a bit of a weird time? A bit, bit freaky. Yeah, it's a bit of a strange time, isn't it? It's a weird, weird time. But uh, I'm, I'm here in my, in my little security uh, doomsday bunker, ready to bring you some sweet, sweet comedy goodness. So don't fear, never fear, Asterix, it's going to be just fine. Did you know that when caterpillars go into the cocoon, mm. they then form a goop. A goop. And the goop is made of imagicels. And then they come out the imagicels into butterflies. Imagicels. Yes. Is this scientific fact, Asterix? Have you got this on good authority? Imagicels. I love this. Maybe the people on the YouTube channel can check it out. Fact check that for us if you can. If you want to share on, on social media, you can, um, you can look at the handles. They're, they, they're potentially going to be um, on our YouTube page, if not in the, the comment box. <laughs> and uh, Randy, yes. feeling, feeling uh, you, how, you how feeling? Me how, how feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm just limbering up. I'm getting ready for this. It's, uh, it's wonderful. The, the Melbourne International Comedy Festival was meant to start... God, what day is it? Yesterday, I think it was meant to kick off. Uh, so it's nice to be cancelled, not cancelled, and, uh, and get a chance to tell some jokes. I do like that you introduced this um, for all of the, the children around the world who, uh, who may not necessarily um, be uh, in their, having their normal daily routine. But also, let's remember, it's, it's 1 a.m. in the UK, and I think it's, you know, between 8 and 10 p.m. in the United States. So I still do have to cater to the late night audience. So some of this material may not be appropriate to children under the age of, you know, 14, I guess. Well, well I think, Randy, you've made one of the big mistakes that a lot of teachers make is assuming that young people are dumb. Oh, hey, hey, no, no, there's no, there was no, there was no uh, assumption of intelligence, just merely some of the topics maybe a little more adult skewed, but come you know on, what? Come on, hey, man. There, there's nice. Google, there's the internet. These kids get it. Okay, Okay. awesome. We're going to do this. That is okay. that. You've just given me carte blanche. Ladies everything, and gentlemen. Everything is now on the table. Just, 
before we start the show today, excuse me, please, Randy, just Sorry. Before, before we start the show, if you want to see this show keep going, you can grab yourself an imagination hoodie on aimmentoring.com and you can also give a donation, $5, $50, right, Randy, you okay, yep, the camera meltdown, $20, $200, $200,000. It was bound any to happen. Any partners that want to work with us, that would be fantastic as well, and we'd, we'd love to work with you. Now, if you're tuning in tomorrow, you'll see the artist segment, which will be brilliant. We're very excited about the artists and what will happen there. And we have some fantastic musicians that will be singing. We have a dancer, Tommy Franklin. He'll be with us. And just quickly, we'll, we'll finish with a couple of comments from the YouTube line. And then, Randy, your keynote will be all yours. Okay, amazing. I'm sorry, I was doing a trampoline and I broke my camera. Can you still it's see 8, me? 8.05 p.m. in Texas from Mr. Yeats TV, from Brad Keogh at 6 p.m. in Washington State, USA. Um, Drew asked, who, did, who does your hair and makeup? Randy? Uh, I did my own today, thank you. Uh, do I look okay? Am I, am I, I've got my AIM mentoring beautiful T-shirt on. Yes, yeah, you can get that on the website too. Isn't it a good T-shirt? I love it. And, uh, yeah, I feel pretty good. Am I looking all right? My eyeball's okay? Yes, fantastic. And, and I agree with Benny, Benny 11. Kids are smarter than you know. And with that, let's introduce Randy Feltface for the Cancelled Not Cancelled Imagination TV Spectacular with Melbourne International Comedy Festival. We are excited. Randy, the stage is yours. And I bid you adieu. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to be here. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my keynote address on imagination. It's a keynote address on imagination, but it's, it's basically a thinly veiled attempt for me to just churn out some of, my, uh, some of my comedy festival gear. But to be honest, you know, I believe, I truly believe, my friends around the world, that imagination has the potential to get us through this situation, at least emotionally. I mean particularly those of us in quarantine and self-isolation, your imagination is quite literally your new best friend. So use it, embrace it. There's plenty of fresh online content, desperate attempts at maintaining the attention of an audience. Don't leave us. We need you. Stay with us. I mean, personally, I'm okay with self-isolation. I'm, I'm quite grateful for that fact. I'm very lucky. Um, so far, there's no real significant differences between how I normally live, to be honest. I'm 39 years of age. I'm single, no children. I work wherever I happen to be at the time. I'm officially of no fixed address. Like if you cut out live performance and fornication, I reckon I could go like maybe five years without talking to anyone. No one's keeping track of my movements. Nobody's policing my decision making. The problem there, of course, is that if you make it to my age with no one around to witness your behavior on a daily basis, you either master the art of self-discipline or run a severe risk of turning into a real dodgy bastard behind closed doors. And I think there's a lot of people globally suddenly having this realisation for the first time, finding themselves inexplicably caged in a confined space with zero accountability. It's a worrying prospect. But I implore you, everybody watching right now, do this with me. Use your imagination. Uh, just mentally scroll through the faces of everyone you know, like every, all of your friends in your friendship group, until you get to an example of what you may become trapped in your house for six months. Because we all know someone who already crossed the line well before COVID-19 came to town. Everyone's got one of these fed house plants, drinking wine out of a bowl, sleeping in a nest of Uber Eats bags, watching Netflix on someone else's account, vaping, commenting on YouTube videos, seven years into a three-year university degree, no money for rent, but somehow still manages to afford a new tattoo every fortnight. These people make your coffee. Show some respect. <sighs> it's time to embrace this situation, right? Reacquaint yourself with your imagination. Maybe, maybe you used to spend more time with your imagination. Maybe you were very close when you were younger. 
Perhaps you drifted apart. Maybe you ditched your imagination for a job or to prove to a partner that you were a serious person, you know, filled to the brim with maturity and responsible life choices, jobs and growth, jobs and growth. Don't worry about that now. Don't worry about it. You're free. Put it aside. The time has now come to lock yourself indoors with nothing but your imagination. So get reacquainted. Build a little fort. Have a few sleeping bag races. Make some little plasticine figurines with screws for eyeballs and arrange them around the house in various reenactments of historical events or famous movie scenes. Look, it's the Battle of Bosworth. Or, or here's the scene from A Star is Born when Bradley Cooper wheezes in his pants. The possibilities are endless. Also, I'm just going to say, uh, if you're the kind of person that indulges in illicit substances, now's probably the time to get into that because there's a lot of colour and movement happening up here. This is like a live cartoon, so I'm sure it'll be entertaining. I'm not watching the live feed of what people are saying because uh, I'm not interested in being heckled by the internet, but um, feel free to write in and tell us which substances you're currently abusing. You look, what I'm trying to say at this point is your imagination in situations like this literally knows no bounds, okay? Maybe, I don't know, maybe you could, maybe you could finally start writing some character descriptions for that science fiction novel you've always wanted to work on. Hmm? Now's the time. The blimblams from the Quarnox galaxy aren't going to come up with their own scintillating three novel character arc, are they? Hmm? It's just you and your imagination. <sighs> I know it can be scary though, right? It's a little terrifying, left to your own devices. But luckily there are already some trailblazers setting wonderful examples like this, Imagination TV. It's going to be here every day. You can tune in, tap into this. Um, there's also a few of our world leaders who seem to be showing an extraordinary level of imagination when it comes to confronting the reality of what we're all facing. A few very imaginative decisions for the good of the people happening out there. Imaginative projections of how long this is going to last, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, if all else fails, you can always watch that Instagram video of Wonder Woman and her famous mates singing Imagine while imagining John Lennon spinning in his grave like a rotisserie chicken as a dozen celebrities commandeer his peace anthem in a poorly judged attempt at global solidarity. I mean, I'm lucky. I'm lucky here in my bunker. I mean, I, aside from the standard apocalypse anxiety, I, I, so far I'm, I'm personally doing okay, you know. I'm at that age now where... I've started using phrases like, I'm at that age now. And I'm also at that age now where I'm comfortable being alone for long periods of time. But I do have to admit, at this point, I am a little envious of people who are isolating with their pets. I want a dog. I want a dog. Can I get a dog in? Who am I talking to? I want a dog. Get me a dog, imaginary friends. But I want like a fully grown, fully trained, chilled out, proper, grown up, useful dog. Not some big, low IQ, bounding boxer dog. You know, the one that'll like chew through your microwave if you turn your back for five minutes. And not one of those little yappy, useless, trembling, you know, those little rat dogs that if left outside to their own devices for like three hours, they'd just be dead, yeah, just hyperventilating with separation anxiety until they get taken by a hawk. <laughs> I'd be happy with like a good sheep dog or like a Kelpie, maybe a border collie. The kind of dog you could train to run out to the shed and load a shotgun for you while you keep the intruder distracted. Useful dog. I want a useful dog. I don't want a cat, okay? I'm not interested in a cat. 
And before all the cat people start commenting, uh, what have you got against cats, Randy? Relax. I have a begrudging respect for cats. I do like cats. I truly believe that they're aliens. So I have a mild fascination with their behavior in general. But I'm allergic to cats. So if I got one, I'd have to keep it in a plastic bag. Apparently they're not very fond of that. They're not really into the plastic bag situation. So I didn't know I was allergic to cats until quite recently. I, um, I was staying with a friend and they had a cat. And I slept on the couch and the cat slept on my face. And when I woke up, I was all itchy and sneezing constantly. So I went to the pharmacy to get some poison to kill the cat and they didn't have any cat poison. I think they ran out because people were panic buying cat poison. I had to get antihistamines. You win this round, cat. <clears throat> I don't envy people isolating with small children. Gosh, that's going to take a bit of imagination to get through that. Good on you. Good on you. They're relentless, aren't they, kids? I'm happy to be childless right now. Seriously. I mean, it's a, it's a weird time, but I get it. I mean, people are very fond of their children. It's the most fulfilling experience you'll ever have. Yeah. Owning a car that doesn't have any crumbs in it. That's pretty fulfilling. A lot of people currently testing the boundaries of their romantic relationships as well. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Locked in a house with your partner. Oh, that's scary. I'm glad to be single at this point. Being single actually generally has quite a lot of its own sort of perks. There are some perks involved with being single. Um, for example... I never have to call anybody from the supermarket and be like, they don't have the one with the blue label. I don't know. No, I said I don't know. That's pretty much it. That is the only perk. Just that and a total absence of responsibility for the emotional security of another human being at the expense of my own true happiness. Ah. No, oh, but Randy's got no one to watch The Good Place with. No. <laughs> uh. It's interesting doing this without anybody laughing because it could just be coming across as the most sort of sad <laughs> monologue tirade, just confessions of a lonely man. Hopefully some of you out there are giggling at some of these concepts because it's meant to be funny. Get amongst it. Just trapped in a dark room with me and my imagination. Hey, what else am I doing? Doing a lot of cooking. Lots of cooking. That's enjoyable. Doing a lot of vegan cooking. Cooking a lot of delicious vegan dishes. I mostly became vegan for environmental and ethical reasons. And now I'm just maintaining it to purely so that I can self-righteously point out that if everybody was vegan, there wouldn't be a COVID-19 or SARS or swine flu or senseless violence against sentient beings that were supposed to be looked after by us. You know what I mean? Where do you get your protein from then, Randy? Peas. I get it from peas, you moron. <laughs> Uh, I tell you another good thing about being vegan in an apocalypse. No one is panic buying chickpea pasta and almond milk. Plenty of hemp seed crackers and buckwheat crisp bread left on the shelves at this point. There's no two item limit on tempeh and quinoa burgers. So get into that. Now's the time. Convert. No, Randy, it'll take more than a complete environmental degradation and a devastating global pandemic for me to stop slaughtering animals, thank you. You'll have to do better than that before I trade my sirloin steak in for a slice of eggplant. Thank you kindly. Thank you kindly, Randy. Eggplant really set the vegetarianism and vegan movements back a decade, I reckon. Remember when we went through that phase where the only vegetarian option was eggplant? If you're watching this, in another country, I'm talking about aubergines. If you're not familiar with the term eggplant, aubergine, aubergine. 
aubergine. You know, the emoji that people use to represent a wang. There were years there where eggplant was the only vegetarian option. It was very difficult to convert anyone to vegetarianism while you're just gnashing away at a bit of slimy vinyl. It's a tricky vegetable. You can't just whack it in a casserole and hope for the best. You've got to slice it and salt it and soak it and leave it out for the next full moon and run over it with your car. Otherwise, it tastes like mucus-covered bicycle tyres. Now there's options, you know. Let's, let's, let's unite. Let's evolve. Imagine there's no chicken. We really genuinely have an opportunity here to make some changes. Like, you know, the global response to our recent bushfires, that was amazing. Everybody donated money. It was incredible. But if the climate policy doesn't change, it will just happen again next year. You don't understand the economy, Randy. We can't afford to take action around climate change. And then this virus threatens the economy and suddenly we found $17 billion behind a couch cushion. It's not how it works, Randy. You don't understand. I don't know. Maybe I don't understand. But we do have to unite, all right? We've got to, we've got to move from this individualistic mindset to a collective mindset. Isolation in this instance is not an act of individualism. You're doing it for the benefit of everyone, weathering inconvenience and anxiety to help everyone, particularly the sick, and more importantly, to help the people who are helping the sick because there are healthcare workers out there on the front lines just doing it hard for the rest of us. Stay inside, man. Who's going to nurse the nurses if the nurses get sick? Mm -hmm. Coast Guard. This is an opportunity for unification, my friends. While literal walls are going up, let's break down the imaginary ones. You know, those, those boundaries that divide and, and, and oppress us. Age, race, class, faith, ability, gender. Challenge them. Observe your reactions. It's a confusing time for a lot of comfortable people. Lean into the discomfort. Lean in. Lean it. Do some research. If there's something you've always felt a bit behind on, do a bit of research. Do some reading. If you haven't been able to keep up with all of the terms in the gender discussion, now's your chance. Learn a few terms. Have a think about it. You know, because sex, gender, and sexuality tend to get bundled together like a phone plan, and misunderstandings can muddy the conversation. So, how do we identify? I'll go first and then everyone else can chip in. Okay. Um, I'm not going <laughs> to wait for your comments. Some people watching are just like, ah, sweaty palms. It's all right. I'll just do me. Um, here we go. So my sex is male. I was handed a cock and balls at birth and they've been nothing but trouble since. Um, sorry about that. It's like watching Michael Winslow. Any Police Academy fans out there will get that. Uh, sex. My gender expression is cisgender male. I identify with the gender I was assigned at birth. I don't feel any social dysphoria where I experience the discomfort of having to act in ways socially different than my gender. I never get addressed in ways different to my gender. And I don't feel any body dysphoria because of the difference between my gender and my sex my gender is like a packet of light and tangy crisps. You wouldn't choose it intentionally, but it went to a lot of barbecues in the 90s. If you're watching that overseas, maybe change salt and uh, light and tangy crisps to, um, I don't know, crystal Pepsi would probably work. And maybe change barbecue to house party. There's a little take home joke. You can change that one. I'm comfortable is what I'm trying to say. I'm socially accommodated. I don't have to have my guard up at all times. So when it comes to your gender, I tend to mind my own business. My sexuality is a little curvier. Until recently, I identified as pansexual in that I was attracted to whoever I was attracted to regardless of gender. 
But I looked at it more closely and maybe I thought maybe I was omnisexual because sometimes gender does factor into the attraction. But then I dug even deeper and I thought I'm probably polysexual in that I'm attracted to two or more genders because I'm mostly attracted to feminine gender presentation and straight men do nothing for me. But now I think I'm probably, I, I think it's time for me to come out as isosexual, which is where you're attracted to anybody who doesn't have the coronavirus. It's a pretty, it's a pretty good one to, to settle on at the moment. Oh my God, you're negative. That's so hot. It's so hot right now. My only real struggle these days is that I'm mostly attracted to queer women and lesbians and they rarely want a piece of this guy. So I get stuck with the straight women. Yuck. Or the occasional bi, polysexual, andro-leaning, very orientated person with enough gender fluidity to hook up with the puppet. It happens from time to time. Randy does all right. Randy's doing all right. <laughs> oh. I'm glad we went there. I have no idea of the reactions, but it made me feel good. I mean, I'm just talking about unification. You know what I mean? It's okay to change your opinions. Try on some other shoes. Now's the time to do it. You know what I mean? Challenge your faith. Why not? If you're a devout Christian, just switch to Islam while you're in isolation. No one will know. Give it a shot. Try it out. I was raised Catholic, so I don't have faith. I have a lot of guilt, but I'm giving Taoism a shot. I'm just giving it a test run while I'm in isolation. Why not? We've got to adapt. We've got to change. You've got to learn new information, change your perspective, evolve. You know what I mean? Take on board new stuff and adapt. You have to be more like the algorithms that absorb all of your online activity to the point that you just have to think about buying a yoga mat and one smashes through your kitchen window. Give it a shot. Take stock. Take stock, my friends. I've only ever had to do this once before. I... um. I had a near-death experience uh, a few years ago. What happened was um, I nearly died from food poisoning, which is a ridiculous way to die, by the way. What would people have said about me after I was gone? Oh, well, yeah, I mean, he always did make poor menu choices. What happened to me was um, I ate something funky in that food court in the big shopping mall where all the obnoxious people go and behave really badly and they're really rude to the staff. You know that big mall where people go there and they act? I'm so embarrassed, I can't remember what it's called. You know the big, it's the food, because there's a big mall, people, oh, this is embarrassing. You know the big, uh, Bali, it's called Bali. So I was in Bali and I got food poisoning and um, I ended up getting salmonella and I was in hospital for six weeks and um, it because it had attached itself to my spleen and after six weeks in hospital, a man cut my spleen out and dropped it in a waste paper basket. So I don't have a spleen anymore. Woo! If you don't know what the spleen does, by the way, it, um, it filters your blood and it helps in the fight against nasty bacteria. It's kind of like the organ equivalent of a nightclub bouncer. You don't really need it and no one really likes it. But if it's not there, someone's going to get their dick out on the dance floor. But I, the, the last time, that was the last time I had to stop. I got forced to stop and take stock like this time. And um, when that happened, uh, I, I started to think about, um, I just have to do something. Wait for this. Wait for it. How does he do it without ruining the magic? Nobody knows. Um, okay, so we're careening towards the end here of my keynote speech. I'm going to end on a story. I'm going to tell you how I got into comedy and then we can all go back to our respective bunkers. Um, not that we're not already in our respective bunkers. We're already here, Randy. Okay, settle down, calm it, calm it, bring it in, bring it in for the final tale. Uh, okay, so the way I got into comedy was um, uh, my uncle actually got me into comedy. My uncle is like an amateur magician. Okay, and by that I mean he really wants to be a magician, but he's just amateur, just awful. He's so bad at it. And every Christmas he does these magic shows 
for us, like Christmas magic shows. And when I say magic shows, you're probably all picturing like rabbits out of hats or little card tricks. None of that. He's like an amateur escapologist daredevil kind of illusionist, just doing dangerous, dangerous stuff with no training and not a lot going on upstairs. Okay. And he always does these Christmas shows for us, and they're always a disaster. One of my earliest childhood memories, right, was we're at my cousin's house and of the pool house with a straitjacket on, and he's going to jump off the pool house into the swimming pool and then not surface until he got himself out of the straitjacket. None of us told him not to do it, by the way. <laughs> so he gets up on the pool house and he has this little catchphrase. Whenever he's about to do a trick, he has a catchphrase. He says, three, two, one, ready. It's like his little catchphrase. So he gets up on top of the pool house and he's like, three, two, one, ready. And he took a step backwards to get a run up and just went Wah! straight through the roof of the pool house impaled his shoulder on a gardening tool and when he landed he made such a loud noise it frightened the dog and the dog bit him on the face <laughs> oh, oh, oh so christmas was always awesome and he wouldn't let us take him to the hospital either he was just like just pulled himself off the gardening tool cracked another beer and went back to the barbecue. And as a result, right, he wrecked his shoulder so badly that um, he's got no feeling in his left hand anymore. Like he can still use it, but he just can't feel things. And he always says horrible things like, Randy, I don't even need the wife anymore. I just close my eyes and think of Mariah Carey. Yeah, he's a unit. He's a bad, bad man. Anyway, so... Um, the year I got into comedy, someone from his local like men's club or RSL or whatever, someone gave him a little Pee Wee 100 motorbike, like a, a child's motorbike. I'm not sure why. Maybe they wanted him dead. But anyway, he turned up to Christmas. We were having Christmas at my family home, which is out in the country. There's nothing around us. And he loves having Christmas at our house because he can really spread out and damage himself in the surrounding fields, right? So this one year, he turned up with this tiny little motorbike and he had built a ramp in the back of his ute. And when I say ute for the Americans, I'm talking about like a truck, like a personal, like a little pickup truck, right? He built this ramp that folded out of the tray and up over the cab. And he had this idea that he was going to drive his little pickup truck ramp around to school fates and county fairs and do jumps on the bike. Again, none of us told him not to do it. So he turns up to Christmas with this ramp and he spent the whole day, I'll never forget, we were all in the house having a nice Christmas. He spent the whole day across the road in the paddock, in the field across the road, just putting up like putting cones down and setting up a little obstacle course and then building the, the run-up to what was going to be the peste resistance of his thing where he was going to do this huge jump on his tiny motorbike. I think probably about 6 p.m., maybe, end of the day, we hear from across the road, we hear, three, two, one, ready! So we all dutifully marched across the road. And there he is, my uncle. you got to picture this guy. He's huge. He's got a big strawberry blonde mullet, strawberry blonde handlebar mustache with a nicotine stain in the middle like he's been eating ass. And we all came across the road and he's sitting there on this tiny motorbike with an orange jumpsuit on. He goes, here we go. I reckon he did about 35 minutes of just weaving through cones. We're like, oh, get to the jump. Just weaving through cones. And he pulls up in front of us. He's probably about, I don't know, 15 metres from the start line where he's going to do his big jump. I don't know what that is in yards, but he's a little bit away from where he's going to do the jump. And he gets off the motorbike, and this is where he added a little bit of showbiz flair. Okay. He gets off the, mic, off the bike and he goes, all right, here we go, kids. And he went to push the motorbike 
to the start line, but he pretended the motorbike was too heavy. Like he's a massive dude, tiny motorbike. He's like, hmm, hmm, oh, I can't push it, kids. It's too heavy. Hmm. We were like, oh my God, you're a comedic genius. And then he just went, oh, bugger it. Pick the motorbike up, put it under his arm and march to the start line like an absolute weapon. When he got there, he went to put the motorbike down, but he couldn't. Because when he picked it up, he inadvertently put his left hand on the exhaust pipe. The tailpipe is very hot from his 37 minutes of weaving through cones. He has no feeling in his left hand. By the time he got to the start line, his hand had melted to the exhaust pipe. He was now fused to the motorbike. He's like, oh. I can't put it down. We're all like, ah, the smell of burning flesh. He's like, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. We're like, it's horrible. That year, he let us take him to the hospital. You've got a motorbike attached to your hand, you idiot. Get in the car. The problem was, well, that was the problem. But the other problem was, uh, because we were having Christmas at my family home in the country, everybody had been drinking all day, so everybody was wasted, so nobody could drive him except for me. I had been on my learner's permit for one week. So I'm in the car one week in to having a learner's permit, just white-knuckling it all the way, two hours to the hospital, just <clears throat> my dad on the passenger seat, observing me, drunk out of his mind. My uncle on the back seat, motorbike on his lap, left hand fused to the exhaust pipe, just sculling a bottle of bourbon with his right hand. And that is not what got me into comedy, but that is definitely what got me into drinking. I was like, oh my God, that is so tough. Anyway, how are we going into comedy? So this is, I'm getting to the end, folks. Stay with me. It's almost over. So we get to the hospital we made it safely. Two hours later, I pulled up, just got out of the car shaking. My uncle gets out carrying the motorbike. It's Christmas Day in emergency. It's chaos. There's people impaled on Christmas trees and children with Lego up their asses. It's, it's chaos. I have never seen a room full of people stop and go silent the way they did when my uncle walked in carrying a motorbike, stinking of burning flesh. The doors opened, he just marched in and everyone just went, He marches up to the counter, slams the motorbike down in front of the nurse and just said, I've done a mischief. They took him into surgery. He was in there for six hours. I had to sit and wait in the waiting room the whole time. And while I was in the waiting room, I looked up at the television and there was an episode of Seinfeld on. I was like, I want to do that. And here I am. Thank you, uncle. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes my presentation on imagination, my keynote speech, which was effectively 30 minutes of me screaming into an iPad. I hope you enjoyed it. Asterix, are you still there? I hope you had a nice time. I know I had a nice time. Please tell me you're still there and I wasn't talking to myself for the last 35 minutes. Do, do, do. She's back. Asterix, you there? Do, 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 do. And I, and I will run away, run away. Yes, I will run away with you, Randy. Cause Let's do it. I'm never gonna, never gonna stop falling in love with you, Randy. Randy, thank you, thank you for joining us on the show. It was an absolute delight. Thank you so much. It, it filled in a good chunk of my day. I appreciate that. Have you got a, an imagination hoodie? Uh, I don't. I don't have an imagination hoodie, no. We'll, we'll send you one to thank you. And if any really? The, yes, yes. And if any of the people watching would like to grab one to help us do this show, I'm Asterix and this is Imagination TV. And we're making this to help the billion-odd kids that are going to be at home facing COVID-19. And Randy, you've been one of the mentors that has now joined the show. And I, I loved how you spoke about so many important topics of us coming together. And I, I couldn't quite hear the illicit sub 
subjects. Um, no, didn't quite hear them. Self-edited. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Bit, way. bit funny. Now, right, Randy, right. let's see who's been talking to you. Oh, please! I can't see any of the comments. Let me know who's who's been saying things. Well done, Randy. Thank, Thank you, you for making us laugh. Night, Shannon Smith. Good night, Shannon. Glorious Seymour Cook. Five Thanks, Seymour. smiley face laughing. Um, Shayaka from Uganda. Randy, three exclamation mark, seven emojis. Oh, seven emojis. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm happy with that. Mar Maria, Randy is woke. And a whole lot more. If you wanted to jump onto the chat line afterwards for a quick chat, maybe some people would say hello. Sure. That wraps up Imagination TV for today. Thank you, Randy. We're going to be back tomorrow at 12 noon. Head to aimmentoring.com to grab a hoodie, give a donation, $5, $10, $15. $15 Get a hoodie. Hoodie. Okay. See you sometime soon, Randy. Thank you to the Melbourne International Comedy Festival for partnering with us for Cancelled and Not Cancelled. Look after yourselves. Yours Thanks so much for having me. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.